The 17th century is also known as the Dutch Golden Age. But how did the Dutch Republic became so prosperous? In this video, you're gonna learn everything you need to know about the Dutch Golden Age. Stay tuned. Welcome back regular viewers. And if you're new, welcome to History Hustle. I'm Stefan, I'm a history teacher and I'm hustling history for you. And if you like this content, if you like history, all these kind of topics, Please consider subscribing, do hit the notification bell to become part of the hustle. Let's start. In 1579, the northern parts of the Low Countries made a definitive stand against Philip II, the Spanish despot they were fighting for several decades by now, in what became known as the Union of Utrecht. Soon after, Philip II declared William of Orange the leader of the Dutch insurgency as an outlaw. So basically everyone could kill him. There was a price on this guy's head. Which happened in the year of 1584 when the French Catholic Balthazar Gerard murdered William of Orange in the Dutch city of Delft. Now a few years earlier in 1581 the Dutch signed the Act of Abjuration where they officially denounced Philip II as their king. They looked for another monarch but couldn't find any and thus in 1588 the Dutch Republic was established. The Dutch provinces now became a confederacy which became known as the Republiek der Zeven Verenigde Nederlanden. To understand how the Dutch Republic became so prosperous in the 17th century we need to look at its state structure. Now note here that the Dutch Republic was fairly unique for its time. It was the first republic in early modern history. The Dutch Republic was a confederation of provinces in Dutch Gewesten that had a great deal of autonomy. The government of each province named the provincial states Gewestelijke Staten had its own structures of power. Some urbanized provinces were ruled by so-called regions, while the less urbanized eastern provinces were represented by noblemen. The overarching government was named the States General, Staten Generaal, and was located in The Hague, which was located in the province of Holland. Sometimes the Netherlands is referred to as Holland, but actually Holland was back then just one province. And now there's two, North and South Holland. The Dutch Golden Age was a prosperous time for the Dutch Republic that lasted mostly throughout the 17th century. There are debates when this Golden Age exactly started. Some argue 1588 when the Dutch Republic was established. Other people say 1602 when the Dutch East India Company was established. Others say 1609 when the 12 years truce between the Dutch Republic and Spain commenced. And the same goes for the end of the Golden Age, but I'll get to that later in this video, so keep watching. So why is the 17th century considered a Golden Age in the Netherlands? Well, that is because the Dutch flourished on several fields. I'm talking about economics, arts and science. The provinces of Holland and Zeeland were already flourishing because of their favorable positions close to the sea. Private entrepreneurs made more risks in their investings and Dutch traders set up trading posts in Africa, Asia and America and this shaped an intercontinental trade that started a world economy. The Dutch carried out commercialized farming. They produced more than they needed themselves and therefore sold their surplus. Their grain was intended for the European market and Amsterdam functioned as a center for this. Amsterdam became a trading hub, especially when Antwerp was conquered by the Spanish. And even after the grain prices dropped, after 1650, the Dutch managed to continue their welfare. They did this by making their agricultural production more efficient. Special mills like Karren Molens were developed to shorten the amount of labor that was needed for the production of agricultural products. So therefore they saved money. And as a Dutchman I can refer to this because we Dutch people for somehow like to make things as efficient as possible and we even derive some kind of pleasure out of this. The rich bourgeois used its investment to build waterways and they dug their own canals and therefore over 30 Dutch cities became interconnected by artificial waterways. Also large parts of the Netherlands were laid dry and basically were reclaimed. This is called poldering. If you are interested in geography definitely do some research of your own about poldering and leave your findings below. Then there was also the winning of peat, also known as turf, which was decayed organic material used for fuel to warm houses and as an energy source. 
The industrial sector developed to meet the demands of the growing population that needed more industrial goods in times of welfare. For example, farmers didn't buy sheep to gain wool for clothing, no, they bought clothes. And with the fall of Antwerp in 1585, the southern investors went with their capital and know-how to the north, to Amsterdam. For foreign trade, ships were needed and Holland became the place to get a ship. There, the knowledge and know-how to build a proper ship was developed, especially with the development of the Fluit ship, a long sailing ship that was able to transport large amounts of cargo. And because of the war with Spain, I'm talking about the 80 years war, the weapon industry flourished as well. As mentioned before, because of the fall of Antwerp, Amsterdam became the trading hub of the world. The Dutch sailed with their ships to other continents to trade and to plunder. In East Asia, there was the Dutch East India Company, which was founded because they merged several separate Dutch companies that were basically operated separately from each other and often fought against each other. So to make it more lucrative, they were founded in one, the Dutch East India Company, also known as the Verenigde Oost-Indische Compagnie, in short VOC. They basically traded in what is now Indonesia, but also in Japan, Taiwan, India, Sri Lanka, and many other places. When we look at the West Indies, the Americas, there was the Dutch West India Company. This company became notorious for its transatlantic slave trade. The Dutch shipped over half a million slave-made Africans from the African continent to the Americans. There they were traded and they had to work under horrific conditions on plantations in the Caribbean and in the north of the South American continent. We can only guess how many of these people died, but the abysmal conditions, it definitely is not something to be proud of. And it also goes for the VOC. They also plundered and massacred in the East Indies. So when you visit Amsterdam and you see these beautiful row houses that were constructed in the 17th century, do note here that it definitely has a dark, Side. If you want to know more about the activities of the VOC and what is now in Indonesia, I'll put a link up in the description. Speaking of row houses, the Dutch Golden Age also gave a cultural boost to the Netherlands. City councils, storage buildings and churches were built by the masses. Walking in Amsterdam today gives you a peek into the 17th century. And then there was also the painting industry. And yes, I am saying industry because paintings were painted by the masses. There was a huge demand for paintings. Painting in the 17th century was not only a form of art, it was highly commercialized where members of the bourgeois delivered a great impulse to. They had the money to spend and thus ordered portrait, landscapes and city side. It was a time when Rembrandt and Vermeer made their works. It was also the time of the scientific revolution. Dutch astronomer Christian Jan Huygens pioneered discovering the moon of Titan and the rings of Saturn. He also invented the pendulum clock and many other things. So this all sounds peachy for the people in the Republic, but do note here that it was mostly the province of Holland that flourished. If we look at the eastern provinces of the Low Countries, these basically stayed behind and didn't profit from the welfare that much. Although the standard of living there was then again better than compared to the rest of Europe. Why did they lag behind? Well, mostly because the ground there was less fertile and therefore most of the farmers stayed self-sufficient and had no investments to make. In 1648, the Peace Treaty of Munster was signed and the 80 years war between the Dutch Republic and Spain was now over. The Dutch Republic was now officially recognized by Spain. In the second half of the 17th century, three wars with England were fought. The third one, the Dutch also fought against the French. And then it was the year of 1672, known as the disaster year, the Rampier, where the Dutch were invaded by the British, by the French, and also by the Germans. The Dutch did manage to turn the tide and drive the enemies out. However, much economic damage was suffered. The period after the disaster year, the period after 1672, there was a big decline in the welfare of the Dutch Republic. However, it has its ups and downs, and some historians even argue that this can be called a silver century. The Dutch historian, Ari van Dersen, who wrote the book, The Last van Veel Geluk, The Burden of Luck, 
basically argued that the Dutch Republic was mostly lucky because the other powerful nations were too caught up in their own affairs that the Dutch made use of this situation to gain great wealth. However, when other countries like England and France got their own affairs in order, the Dutch were cut up on all sides. Now, if you want to know more about how the Dutch Republic came into existence, you can check out this video. Also check me out on Patreon because with your donations, I can keep doing this and expand. Thanks for watching. Do not forget to subscribe and see you later.